What is your biggest fear? For some people, it's going to the ocean and swimming with sharks. But for a lot of people, it's going to the dentist and getting their teeth worked on. So we believe that when getting dental implants, the best way is to be asleep. But that can make people a little nervous when they've never had anesthesia before and they don't know much about it. So today I'm Nick Hansen and I'm gonna to get to the point on anesthesia. In your lifetime, you've probably been to a general dentist where you've had local anesthesia done. That's where they went in, they numbed up the specific area that they were gonna work on. But you probably haven't been somewhere where you've been sedated with uh, general anesthesia so that you could have your whole mouth worked on. And so for a lot of people that could be scary. And so that's what I wanna kind of talk to you today about is a little bit about anesthesia and what we do to make sure that people are safe and comfortable during procedures. When I'm speaking to patients and I'm trying to explain a little bit about IV sedation to them, I always refer to colonoscopies. It's the most general thing that people have had done because the American Cancer Society recommends that at age 45 and older, start getting colorectal exams uh, periodically. And that could be through colonoscopy or other means that are less invasive. But a lot of people have had a colonoscopy and that's the same type of sedation that we are using. There are different levels of anesthesia. And I talked to different anesthesia providers while I was preparing for this video, and they explained the different levels of sedation. There's mild sedation, there's moderate sedation, and then there's deep sedation. So we choose which level of sedation we're doing based on the procedure that we're doing. So like for a full mouth of implants, we're gonna use deep sedation. But for a single implant, we're gonna use moderate sedation. IV sedation is neat because we're able to use different medications for every specific patient and put different medications in the IV and get it directly into the bloodstream. So what we start out with is Versed. And Versed is going to help a patient to relax before the procedure starts. Then we're able to use propofol. And the propofol is what's going to be used throughout the procedure to keep the patient asleep. After the patient is asleep, the surgeon's able to use local anesthesia in specific areas to numb up the patient so they're not gonna feel any discomfort. But the IV is also going to have a pain reliever in there as well called fentanyl. And the fentanyl is going to help with any other pain that the patient might feel during the procedure. There's also an antibiotic that's put in the IV and that's to help prevent any infections. There's also possibly a nausea, anti-nausea medicine called Zofram, and that's in there to help the patient when they wake up not feel nauseated. There's also a steroid, and that steroid has a little bit of anti-nausea in there as well, but the, the steroid's going to help the patient to not swell up after the procedure. But it's still important because that swelling is going to come if we don't use ice packs. So it's really important to still use your ice pack that steroid only lasts through the evening, and then it's important for you to use uh, ice packs to keep the swelling down. One of the best benefits of the IV sedation is the next day you should feel a lot more comfortable than if you weren't sedated because no matter how relaxed you are at the dentist, you're still going to be biting down on that bite guard and if you're not sedated, you're going to be fighting it and your joints are gonna be sore because it is a long procedure. But when you're asleep, your mouth is relaxed open and you're gonna be able to feel a lot better the next day because your joints aren't gonna be sore from fighting that bite guard the whole time. One of the things I wanted to know is what is the difference between the deep sedation done for a dental procedure and the deep sedation done in a hospital setting where a patient might be getting a brain tumor worked on or an open heart surgery. When they're in the hospital, they're a lot of times they're gonna be intubated. They're gonna put a tube down their throat so that they can help that patient to breathe. Whereas when we're doing a dental procedure, we keep that airway open and we let the patient breathe on their own. But in the hospital setting, when they are able to intubate the patient, they're able to use a gas and that gas is going to help keep that patient asleep. So they might use propofol as well, but they're able to use a gas to, throughout the procedure that that patient's able to inhale and get in their bloodstream to keep them asleep during the procedure. When they're doing a procedure where the patient can't move, there's also a, a paralyzing drug that they use so the patient doesn't move. Like when you're getting a 
a dental procedure or a colonoscopy and they're using IV sedation for those procedures, the patient's still able to move on their own and they're, they're not paralyzed, they're not using any kind of those kinds of drugs. So they're just kind of sleeping during the procedure. Some people like to snore during the procedure and they're just comfortable. But when you're getting something like a heart surgery or a brain tumor worked on, you can't move at all. And that's when they use that paralyzing drug in the sedation as well. It's very important to have somebody that is monitoring you during the procedure. There's so many different levels of medicine that can be used in the IV and it's not, it's not cookie cutter. Every patient is different. Everybody has different backgrounds. Everybody has different vitals and you want somebody watching that monitor and knowing you specifically during that procedure and not using just some pre-made concoction. So, I find it really important. It's really neat to watch our anesthesia providers during the procedure. It might look boring, but they're doing a very, very important job to make sure all of our patients are very safe and comfortable. I hope you found this video to be very informative and make you feel more comfortable with anesthesia. I also hope that it made you feel more comfortable to have a oral surgery procedure done with IV sedation. And if you're over 45, and haven't had a colonoscopy, hopefully this makes you feel more comfortable when you have to go get that colonoscopy done. Can't help you with feeling uncomfortable about a colonoscopy, but with the anesthesia that goes with the colonoscopy. I'm Nick Hansen. Today we got to the point on the different types of anesthesia.